Hey guys, it is Dungeon Master Mark, and today's video is going to be a basic six step tutorial on uh, basic painting of miniatures, uh, primarily focused on fantasy miniatures, but this can be applied towards historical and other things as well. But for the purpose of this, we're going to focus mostly on fantasy miniatures since that's what I paint. So before we get started, um, our subject we're going to be painting today is a Reaper Bones miniature. Looks like a little evil barbarian. So the first tip I'm going to give you guys is find something to put your mini on so that you can hold it nice and steady or you can set it down while you, while you paint. That way you're not fumbling around with it, your hand's not going to get crammed up, you're not going to drop it, things like that. So this is just a regular craft, or craft paint bottle with a little bit of poster tack and then the mini obviously stuck on there. You can see he's not going to just fall off casually. So very, very basic tip. Um, now, for the purpose of what we're doing today, we're going to have six basic steps. First is going to be if you need to prime the miniature, you're going to prime the miniature. And we're going to have a base coat. We're going to have a wash. We're going to have a highlight. Um, any type of fine details we want to do after we highlight. And then varnish, which the varnish is basically when you're clear coating the miniature at the very end. So in our case, we're using a Reaper Bones miniature. So we're not going to need to prime it. Um, if you're using like a metal, metal miniature, something like this, you may need to prime it. Um, you can prime miniatures either white or black, some people like gray. Um, it primarily is going to be based off of if you're trying to make the colors go really, really light or really, really dark, because it's a little bit harder to bring up the color and make it lighter on something that's completely black. But if you're painting something that's mostly one color and you want it to be kind of dark, um, black primer works very, very well. So it's more of a personal kind of preference. Uh, so where to start? Uh, the first thing we really want to do is take a look at all the materials we're going to be using. Um, so let's start with the brushes, brushes first. I can't talk today. Um, as far as brushes, I use everything from Citadel. I use some Hobby Lobby brushes. Um, this is the Craft Painter brand, or American Painter, I'm sorry, I believe from Hobby Lobby. Um, and then my favorite brushes are the Games and Gear brushes. And these are the Adepticon Extremes. Um, they are a little pricey, but ooh, if I can get it apart. Very, very fine tip. Um, as you can see, they come apart, so when you're painting, and then when you're traveling with them, you just put it up like that, and then you get a nice little traveling case. Um, like I said, these are quite a bit more expensive than like your standard brushes you would get from either Citadel or even uh, like the ones you get at Hobby Lobby. So do brushes matter? Yes, to a certain extent. Um, they're going to last longer if you take care of them, and you're going to get a little more finer detail. But if you're just getting into painting, I would highly recommend getting some very fine point like some citadel or maybe some cheaper brushes from hobby lobby or michaels and starting off with those that way you can learn the skill set to where you can put those higher quality brushes to use next thing we're going to talk about is paint um, as far as painting your miniature there's many different types of paint which i'm going to go over a review of those later um, in more of an advanced painting tutorial but you have everything from like your kind of simple craft paint uh, which this is craft smart which you normally get from walmart you can get at michael's places like that we have some of the reapers master series paint which is a very very good quality paint it's a little thinner so you don't really need, normally need to water them down much um, but you can uh, another one of my favorites is game color very very high quality paint um, they water down really really well and they cling to almost everything um, some people actually don't even prime their minis. They just go straight for the, the basic colors in this and blend away. Now, Citadel paints, I have a love and hate relationship with. Um, the paint quality is normally pretty nice, but these pots dry out something horrible. So you have to be a little more cautious of how long you leave them open. And then some of the paints to me are a little too thin. Some of them are a little too thick. But the nice thing about Citadel paints is they have different uh, kind of ranges. They have like a base color, which is a little thicker. And you have some layer paints, which are a little more watered down. So you can add uh, layers to, like, say, if you have a couple different colors of green, you can use that to kind of blend them together. And then they also have what's called technical paints. Um, for This right here is a texture where it creates more of like a dirty, dusty effect. And then they have, of course, your ink washes. So there's the Citadel version. And then you have the game color version of ink wash. And then you have some other types of technical paint. This is Blood for the Blood God, which is a beautiful blood effect. 
And then you have glazes, which glazes we'll probably not get into today. It'll be more for an advanced class, but basically glazes allow you to kind of blend colors together by using a, basically what a glaze is, it's kind of like a wash that's very thinned out. So it allows you to slowly blend and build up colors over the course of several layers. Um, for this tutorial, we're doing mostly a speed painting, so we're not going to use much glazes. Um, I think that's about it for the basics of painting. Um, like I said, there's several other brands of paint out there. Um, one other brand I, I definitely have to give a shout out to is McCorney Paints, which is made by Dwarven Forge. They make a very, very good quality paint. It is fairly watered down already, so you don't have to do a lot of watering down to it. Um, they're actually made specifically for the Dwarven Forge products, which is a PVC similar to the Bones material. So it sticks very well to Bones. And another good thing is, like I said, this comes four ounces. This bottle is almost the same price as some of these. So as you can tell, the Bacorni paint's a very good value. So definitely got to give them credit. They make a very, very good paint. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, since we do not have to prime this, is we're going to go in our base color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slowly start painting the skin areas. So the primary goal, what you want to do for your first step is what's I, what I call building up. So any place where you know it's going to be really, really hard to get to, we can always come back to later. Um, in this case, a lot of his skin is going to be covered in, of course, a flesh color. So let's go ahead and get started in that, okay? Let me go ahead and pause this for one moment. And we're going we're back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour just a little bit of this out. Like so we don't want to work with a whole lot there. And if you need to wet your brush, you, know, you want to have a little cup of water nearby and something to dry your brush on, which in our case, I have a, a little washcloth I use just for painting. So let's go ahead and get in here. Let's go ahead and get his flesh done. There you go. So like I said, what I'm going to do is the flesh is I'm actually going to do two coats. I'm going to do one really, really light coat. And then I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to come back and do a second coat. And we want to make sure we get kind of in the little nooks and crannies, any place that's really, really deep in there that we don't want to have to try to get later. All right, so bear with me one second, guys. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back once I get all the flush done, okay? All right, guys, we are back. So as you can tell, I have the base coating for the skin all done. Now this mini is a little interesting because if you notice the very back area here, um, it's actually made where it kind of looks like you could either make that, oops, make it on, the, on his back where that is either a cloak and it gets tucked under his belt and, and comes down to here, or you can make it a skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it look like that is part of his back. All right, so now what we're going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and paint his, let's do his belt. If you see where the belt kind of goes around a little bit, there are some kind of tricky spots where it's going to be up under the arm. Not as much, obviously, as, as the flesh where you have some of the deep areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint the belt real quick. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the belt. Let's go with black and then we will uh, do a little bit of highlights on top of it. Which bear with me once so I need to get out a little bit of black paint. Here we go. Now black is one of those super deep dark colors, obviously, so you don't need to use as expensive as a paint for dark blacks. And bear with me, guys. I'm trying to paint around the camera here. Let's go ahead and get way up underneath there. Now I do want to be pretty careful. Like I said, we don't want to splash a whole bunch up on the skin on the sting. I can't talk on the skin tone itself. So what we'll do is we'll kind of take it easy. But like I said, the cloth is actually going to come up and around the belt. So we're going to have to go around the belt anyway. So we'll go ahead and do the belt first. That way we can then take our time and work on the cloth. All 
All right, well, bear with me one second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and finish painting up the belt, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back with the black. So as you can tell, I went all the way around the mini with the black and painted the belt. I also went ahead and base coated where the sword on his hip is. And that way, when we go over it later with a silver color, it'll kind of make it pop and look really old and uh, metallic -y and kind of evil looking. And then I also did the helmet, which of course we're going to dry brush with some silver or gray to make it look like iron. And then the horns we'll do with a white color and then do a little bit of shading. And then the axe head, I did a nice dark black and then later we're going to go over that and add some metallic colors to it. So next what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and start on the loincloth. So for the loincloth, I think we're going to go a nice deep scarlet red. Now the game color paints, um, some of the miniature paints themselves, um, they're made directly for miniatures, obviously. Um, you got to be careful. Some of them you need to shake up more than others. Games Workshop isn't as finicky as like the game's color paints. But the game color paints, I think, more than makes up for the quality and how they actually stick to the miniature. So let's go ahead and get him up here. Let's go ahead and start on the back so you guys can see the color. It's a beautiful color. On this case, like I said, I already went over the belt loop there just to make it kind of pop out a little bit. So don't be afraid of getting a little paint on the sword. Like I said, we can always go over it later anyway because we're going to have to add the silver. So it's not a big deal. And you can see how that red color is going to make the black, especially the silver later, really, really, really pop. All right. So stay tuned, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to go all the way around the miniature and go ahead and do the loincloth. And we'll be right back. Okay, folks, we got the black on. We got this regular skin base coat done. Now we have a nice red loincloth all the way around. So finally it's starting to come together a little bit. Now I'm going to do something a little interesting. On the next step here, what we're going to do, I think we're going to do the boots. We're going to do like a dark brown. And then I think we're going to go ahead and do the bracers. Dark brown as well, that way we kind of balance out. We got a little dark brown up top, a little down at the bottom. Just kind of bring it all together. Yeah, I think we'll do that. All right, so bear with me one second. Now, for this, I'm actually going to use it's called Earthstone by Bercorny Paints. It's actually a rather dark brown, though. So, let me go ahead and shake this up real good. And you'll see this paint is very, very watered down. Oops, got a little extra drop there. It's okay though. Now I'm not sure how well, you, how well you can tell in the video. There's a lot of texture. Here we go. On the boots. It's very, 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 very uh, furry. So what we're going to do is we're, like, so we're going to coat the whole thing. And then later I'm going to come in. I'm going to do a lighter brown um, for this down here. And I think we'll do the lighter brown color here on the axe handle. And then this little piece right there holding the sword up. So let's go ahead and grab that drop there. Yeah, we're going to be very careful. We don't want to get any more on the skin than we have to. And the good thing is, like I said, that boot is raised up, so it's a little easier to get around it. As you can probably tell, if we would have started with the brown first, it'd be much more difficult to get to that little inner boot loop there. Like I said, if you do get a little bit on there, it's no big deal. Uh, when we do the uh, fifth, the next, the last step, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit touch-up, what I call fine detail. If you see any little details you want to paint later, like special colors, make them pop. And then any type of little special uh, touch-ups is when I do them there. All right. Um, well, give me a couple minutes here, guys. Like I said, it's going to take me a while to... It's going to take me probably about five minutes to get all these little areas filled in. And then I'll be right back. All right, guys, and we are on to the next base color. So as you can tell, we got the boots nice and cleaned up. And I got the leather gauntlets now, which really and truly, like I said, I was kind of tempted to do this metal, but with the, we're going to do a little bit of metal dry brush on the helmet, a little bit on the belt, and on the axe, so I don't want to overdo it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and paint the shaft of the weapon here, a lighter brown color. 
and then the very tips of the boot what we'll do is we'll go over just those a little bit so it makes it look like there's uh, two tones of leather so for that we're going to use the Reaper uh, I think that's called the light leather I believe is what the, the color code is there we go let's go ahead and start on the boots first I'm going to we're just going to barely touch those on the tips and get around the back there. Now, as you can see, I'm leaving the uh, very base uh, white piece of the bones there. I'm going to leave that white for now. What we'll do later is I'll go ahead and I will paint that black all the way around. So I don't want to leave these too dark down here. And like I said, this little bit lighter brown color will also make that stick out a little bit. Let me go ahead and do the first boot, and then what we'll do is we'll cut away, and I'll come back once that's done. There we go. I'll give you guys a good view of it here real quick. So as you can see, what it does is it kind of gives it a little bit of texture there, almost like kind of like Native American moccasins a little bit since he's a barbarian. And then what also happens is when we dry brush that and we add a little bit of white to the top, it'll make that kind of pop, make it look more like fur. All right, well, bear with me one second. Like I said, I'm going to do the other side, and then I'll do the shaft of the weapon right around the hands there real quick. And I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so we now have the axe handle all looking like wood. Or I should say nice and brown. And we got the base of the shoes there, like the bottom part, a little bit uh, lighter brown color. So there's a couple different things we could do next. Uh, normally I would probably go ahead and start on the axe, and that way we can do a little dry brush. But what I want to do is I'm actually going to focus on the horns on the helmet first. And that way then we can dry brush over the, the mask with a little bit of silver. And then we'll dry brush a little bit of white over the cloth, the boots, the axe, and everything and make it uh, almost done. So let's go ahead and I think what we're going to do is we're going to use a Bone White by Game Color. There's also a nice Games Workshop, uh, Yushabda Bone, I believe is how it's pronounced. But uh, I like the Game Color one just a little better. It's almost kind of a sandy uh, off-white color. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little, oops, and that's why you got to be careful because uh, you don't want to waste a whole bunch of paint. And now I feel like a jackass. All right, so that's what I get for trying to do two things at once, look through the camera. So let's go ahead and get a little coat on here. And the good thing, like I said, when you're using these craft bottles like this, you can hold it upside down and get some weird angles on if you need to. Oops, sorry. Get back in the camera area here. There we go, that's a little better. All right, see if that color shows up there a little bit. So, as you can tell, it's fairly close to the color of the skin, but when we do the highlight and a little bit of white over that, it's going to make it pop out a little more. So, give me one second. I'm going to do the other side, and then what I'll do is I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back now. We have both of the horns done up in the bone color. Now, I was going to go ahead and start doing the silver metallic, but actually, I think we got a good thing going here right now. <clears throat> now, luckily, like I said, this color is obviously lighter than the brown down there. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and do a real quick uh, dry brush of the boots. That way we can go ahead and make that color pop just a little bit. So let me go ahead and grab a brush to dry brush. Now, ideally, like so you want to use your older brushes when you dry brush, something that's flayed out a little bit. And all you want to do is you just want to get just the very faintest bit on your brush, and you want to get most of it off. As you can see, I'm trying to work most of it off, right? And all we're going to do is we're just going to real gently go across the surface just enough where we get just the tightest little hairs on the surface and give them some color. I'm just going to start to lose the color a little bit, so let's go ahead and put a little more in there. We're going to work it out. All right, so let's go ahead and do it again. 
And what this is going to do, it's going to make those little textures pop. So it's going to make it look like that five minute of painting look like we spent hours painting, hours blending. So some people call this highlighting and then the technical term is technically dry brushing. Like I said, you want your brush as dry as possible. That way you can control how much paint you're applying. So let's go ahead and move that up there. I get the camera to focus a little better there. So as you can see, we added a lot of texture to the boots there. All right, and now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to do real gently on the shaft of the weapon itself. And you can actually do this before or after, depending on how you want wood grain to look. Just the lightest little touch. And you could technically, even on like the axe head itself, not sure how well that's going to pick up, you could technically do a little number like this. Give us some texture. See if I can move the light a little bit so it picks up a little better. If I can get it to focus better. There we go. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start on the metals. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is that we're going to gently dry brush the helmet with a little bit of silver. And then we'll come back with a little bit of uh, plain white to get the horns up. And then we're what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually dry brush the axe head. So let me go ahead and rinse my brush real quick. Sorry about that. And since this will probably not take very long, I'll go ahead and leave the camera on for this part. Now, the interesting thing about metallics is there are several different ways you can do that. Um, you can find some very nice, fairly dry uh, craft paint that work really, really well. And then Citadel makes a very nice what's called lead belcher. Um, if you're painting something straight silver, I would say probably go with the lead belcher. For what we're doing though, like I said, we already have a nice black undercoat. So I'm just going to put just a little drop of silver down there. And we're going to do basically the same thing, we're just a light dry brush. So we're going to try to get as much of it off as we can. So let's go ahead and start with the axe here. So it looks very, very old and weathered, which to me, a barbarian, like I said, they're not going to have mithril weapons. They're going to have something very, very crude. So to me, that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get that focused a little bit. Here we go. All right, so we got a pretty nice effect. Now, on the very, very tip, we do have a couple areas I want to kind of hit just so we can make them pop a little. And I like very, very, oops, if I can get a better view so you guys can see it. Right here, I just want to kind of touch this up a little bit. Right here. And then what we're going to do on the very tip here is we're going to do this in a very shiny. Like maybe that's been replaced or it's been sharpened recently. And just a little fine details so we can make it kind of pop a little bit. Now remember when you do your clear coat, um, there's different types of varnishes. So there's what's called a matte varnish, which is very dull and very flat, obviously. And that's not going to shine as much as a shiny coat, like a gloss coat. So that's going to dull that down just a little bit. Now what we'll do is we're going to come back in a little bit and I'm going to do just a little feathering right along the edge. So it's going to give it that illusion that it's actually a little bit sharper uh, than what it really is. All right, so let's go ahead and rinse off the brush real quick. Anytime you switch paints, um, you definitely, especially if you have a nice brush, you want to make sure you clean it. They do also make some brush cleaner. So every once in a while, you'll just take your brush, have a little bit of moisture on it, and just kind of work the bristles just a little bit. And it does a couple of things. One, it keeps it nice and clean and also keeps the tip nice and sharp. All right, so let's go ahead and move that out of the way. All right, oops, wrong brush. 
And let's go ahead and dry brush that helmet just a little bit. I want to get this super dry for this part. Now this particular brush is about on its last legs as you can probably tell. And we got a nice, if I can get the camera to focus here, got a nice shading effect on the helmet. Now the helmet does have a little bit of kind of interesting, uh, like a little mark on the top of the helmet, so maybe we'll come back and do a little fine tuning on that. Oh, I almost forgot we got a little bit of area on the sword here we can hit to make it pop a little bit. And we're definitely going to have to come back and we'll color that. Now the interesting thing when it comes to highlighting colors like red, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can definitely use a white color. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to, since we already have a little on here, we're going to hit it just a little bit of silver. So we're going to do a basic highlight with just a touch of silver. And then we still have the belt underneath here. Now for the belt, I'm going to go ahead and ditch this brush for now. And that brush is about shot. It, uh, as you can tell, we can work the tips a little bit and try to get a little bit closer together. And then actually take a little bit of saliva and work it back to where it's a little bit closer. That's maybe only got one or two more little uh, paintings left in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use actually my good brush. I'm going to try to work a lot of it out. And for the, under the belt area, we're just going to gently run that across the raised areas. That way I can make some of the texture on the belt itself pop. So it looks like there's a little bit of area on the handle there. That's all right, though. So not so well how well the detail is going to pop out there. It's looking pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and we'll take it up another notch. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of paint off there. Let's go ahead and hit this blade so we can give it some shade. Now this is the point where you want to start being a little careful. We don't want a bunch of overspilled paint. And we want to clean things up as we go. There we go. So we got that done. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add a little bit more of an edge to this axe. So any type of sword and things like this, what you can do what some people call feathering, okay? We're gonna get a little bit off there. All we're gonna do is we're gonna keep touching and dragging this way. As you can see, it adds a little bit of extra shininess just to the tip there. So for the other side, we're just gonna flip it upside down. Do the exact same. Now, if we have lots of time, you can actually keep doing this and you can come back over and over and over and use shinier color metals and what it's going to do is going to make that look like a very fine honed axe that details a little better there there we go that shows it off pretty good alright so we got that part uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of white and we want to touch up those horns so for that part, I'm actually going to use a little bit of the Stone Edge Dry Brush from Percorny Paints. It's probably my favorite uh, off-white color for doing bones and up. Oh, oh, probably need to shake it up a little better. And uh, anyway, doing like bones and horns and some certain dry brushing. There we go. 
It is very watery, so if you're dry brushing, you definitely want to make it very, very, very thin. As you can tell, like the color, there's not a huge color difference here. So we may even do a third little coat. So let's go ahead and just touch these up just a little hair. And we're trying to do two things. One, we're trying to blend them in just a little bit so that the colors don't uh, fade together, like where the flesh and the horn is. And then the second thing we are doing is we want to give it more depth. Like I said, we want there to be more than one color in that horn because actual horns on cows, animals like that are definitely always more than one color. We can leave it a little darker up towards the top. And then don't forget when we do our ink wash here in a second, that is going to make things pop a little more too. There we go. So now we got a nice coloration there on the on the horns. Let's just touch this one little bit here up. All right, so now since we have this out here, and it's a little bit lighter than that silver, what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little more, okay? Let's get a little bit more white on there. And we got just a little bit of paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger, I'm just going to gently brush it, kind of like we're wiping off the excess. And what should happen when we do that Gonna make it look even sharper on the edge there. Now the other way you can do that is you can actually take your finger and just or your brush and kind of gently put it on like this, and then take your finger and just gently rub off like that. As you can tell, a very very similar effect. Um, that method I actually saw from a German painter, and. I think it makes it look a little bit more rustic, like the way you'd see like a very, very primitive axe. So either way, it's kind of a, kind of a neat effect. Now one thing we're going to do a little bit later, I'm going to add some of the fine detail. I'm going to put a little, make it look like a little gemstone on that sword hilt. I'm going to put a little white dot, which you can barely see. But later I'm going to touch that with maybe a yellow or maybe a green. Just give it a little bit interesting color. All right, so right now we are done with the basic color painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this maybe about two or three minutes to dry, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do our wash. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. So we are ready to wash now. This has been drying for actually about five minutes, so it's now safe to touch. We don't have to worry about the paint rubbing off easily or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called an ink wash. Um, now there's a couple different ways you can do ink wash. Um, you can buy the pre-made ink wash from Citadel, Game Color, Reaper, uh, a couple other colors or companies make it. Basically, it has a chemical in it where it's they've broken the tension of the water that's that's in the in the wash, and then there's a little bit of paint in there or ink. So what that does, it's going to run into like the little crevices, like in between, like where the muscles are and little parts on the cloth. And it's going to make those deep recesses kind of pop a little bit. So some people will use um, different types of dips where you can basically dip the whole miniature into that. And it's very, very thick. Um, the best use for those is if you're painting a very, very large army and you don't want to control so much how much wash you're going to put on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to shake this up real good because it is very watery and we want the ink to be well dis distributed. Um, now this is Agrax Earthshade. It is a, it's got a little bit of a brownish color and it also has a little bit of black. So it's gonna make the skin look kind of dirty, which we're okay with. And what we're looking for here is just to make the details pop a little bit. I know some people don't really care for ink washes, but if you want to get the most bang for your buck out of your mini and make it really, really pop, you gotta love the ink wash. And the good thing is, like I said, if you have some really, really small little errors, sometimes the ink wash will help I'll hide those as well. Like I 
Like I said, you don't want to put too much on there. If you glob too much on there at one time, it'll run and it'll kind of look kind of kind of uh, goofy looking. Now you see where the hands are and the fingers are. Like I said, you can build up a little bit of ink wash in a couple coats there. Now, since the back of this mini is kind of vague as to whether it's like a cloak or if it's his back itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to apply some in some areas so we can make it look very natural looking. So see up here at the top, we want to kind of brush this away. If we need to, we can pull it off a little bit. There we go. And we want to make sure it's in the deeper spots like here in the back so it like, looks like an actual crevice in his skin. All right, now if we remember the belt here, there's some little ridges. And then the dark areas of the belt, we're going to put a little bit there on the cloak or the loincloth. And then on the boots, so it makes those little ridges pop. And then the last thing we want to do is get towards the edge of the loincloth there. So we get a nice little shadow effect. And then, like I said, just give your miniature a once-over. We want to make sure we don't have any strange areas with no ink wash. We don't want that right there. And if you have too much, like I said, you can always pull it off with the brush a little. Just take it and then kind of rub it off. But like I said, muscles like this, like I said, we don't have a problem with those being defined. All right, so let's go ahead and... Now one thing you ever like to say, this has a little bit of a glaze to it, like a little bit of a lightning effect. Um, when we do a clear coat, it's going to dull that down so it's not going to be quite as shiny. So that's something you would definitely want to remember when you clear coat it and do like a flat varnish, it's going to make it less shiny. Uh, one thing like I said, it did make the horns a little darker. So what we're going to do here in a second, I'm going to go over those with a white, kind of to bring it down a notch. All right, let's go ahead and wipe off my brush real quick. Let's go ahead and take this away. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to, yeah, I think we're going to use the same white color we have out for. So let's go ahead and hit that real lightly. Maybe too light there. Got a little hair or something hanging off there. I apologize guys, it's a little hard to do this with the camera in the way. I will try my darndest. Now later on in the series we're going to go over what's called glazes. Uh, glazes work similar to washes, they're a little bit more of an advanced topic. Um, you can use those to blend colors together. And like I said, we will go over those in a later video. Um, really true, like I said, you could use a glaze with a little bit of yellow and really make these horns pop, make them look very kind of uh, ancient looking. Give them some wicked color. But for what we're doing, like I said, we're doing a fairly quick paint job, so it's not going to be super, super important. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and stop what we're doing real quick. Now technically, like I said, you could just stop what we're doing at this point. You could clear coat it and you could definitely just call it quits and... Be happy merrily and on your way, right? But what we want to do is we want to take uh, just a couple minutes. Like I said, we're going to do the, the, the very base there, black. And we're going to try to find some fine details to pop out. Like I said, the one's going to be the gem on the sword hilt. And then I don't, I don't see anything unusual about the boots. See, sometimes you'll find like a little belt buckle here or there that you can highlight. Just kind of make some pop. And then we'll do the little piece on the helmet there, which I'm not sure if you can see, there's kind of like a little, almost like a little winged emblem. Very, very faint. All right, so let's use, what's a good complementary color? Let's do yellow. Yellow is something a little bit different and definitely contrast from the red, right? 
All right, let's shake the shit out of this real quick. Pardon my French. Put a little drop there. Not gonna need very much. Now for this, I'm gonna use a very fine point brush. I happen to have this one here, which I'm not sure if you can tell, the point on that sucker is super fine. This is one of those reasons why you want a couple different brushes. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna put that little itty bitty gemstone all we're basically going to do is just barely touch it. Like I said, most people who see this many aren't even going to notice that there's that little minuscule drop of yellow paint there. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to see if I can do this with the camera in the way there. There's a couple ways you can go straight on and try to touch it. Or what we're going to do is we're going to try to very gently blend it. I think I might have made a little bit of a mess. Where it is, we're going to try to rub that. Yep, that's not going to work. So unfortunately, like I said, the camera's a little bit in the way there. I'm going to get my brush a little wet so I can get that little bit of wet paint off. There we go. Let me try that again. All right, so bear with me one second here, guys. A little bit of my OCD kicking in, right? Let's see if that'll be on the camera. Just the slightest little hint of yellow up there. Let's do one more little touch. Like I said, it's very, very faint, which that's fine. Now, one thing to always remember, um, like I said, anything that's glossy is going to come down a little bit in shininess when you clear coat it. Sometimes when you have very faint colors like that yellow, sometimes it'll kind of muddle those to where you can't hardly see them anymore. So that's always something you want to remember whenever you clear coat stuff. Um, like I said, some of that stuff you've spent a lot of time blending will suddenly disappear. Now the one last thing we're going to do before we go is there's a couple little spots around the belt where there's a little cloth that sticks over. So what we'll do, because we got plenty of time, like I said, we've maybe spent realistically actual, actually 35 minutes painting of this, and then the rest of the time has been waiting for stuff to dry and the tutorial itself. So what we're going to do is go ahead and touch up that little bit of red cloth that comes over. A little bit there. Touch up a little bit around the sword area there. Alright, and that should be about it. See, since we did add a little bit of red there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a touch more ink wash here in a couple moments when it dries. Uh, what I'll do first though is, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and paint this black, and then I'm going to go ahead and clear coat it, and then we'll come back and I'll show you guys what everything looks like after it's been clear coated. So stay tuned. I'll be back here in about uh, 10 minutes. All right, bye-bye. All right, folks, I changed my mind. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to keep the camera on while we paint the base black because there's a couple of things I want to go over with you guys. Now, as far as base colors, um, if you go online, you'll see where a lot of people recommend only basing the miniature, um, like what color terrain you have, things like that. So some people only do green if they're painting like military units. Um, some people only do black. Myself, personally, I prefer black um, because what you can do is you can actually do a real light dry brush over top of that and you can add some green hues to it, some some grays and a bunch of different colors. And if you're really clever, what you can do is you can add a little bit of green and a little bit of brown, almost like maybe like some really dirty like algae kind of like dirt or like, even like stone. And then it'll blend in a little bit with stone. It'll blend in a little bit of grass and it makes it very... Uh, very functional. 
So let's go ahead and we'll paint around this real quick. And then we will go ahead and get it clear coated. Alright guys, well stay tuned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now. And I will come back with the finished product once we have got everything all clear coated and dried. Which, once you put the clear coat on one of these, um, the one I'm going to be using is the Krylon Matte or Flat Color. It actually dries in a couple of minutes, so it's not one of those ones where you have to let it sit for like a, a day or anything like that. There are some brush-on varnishes, which a lot of those you will normally have to let them dry for about 24 hours. So I'm kind of impatient. I don't like waiting 24 hours for something to dry. So I just use the Krylon. Um, the best thing on the market is actually what's called Tester's Dull Coat. It is a very flat, very strong protective finish. Um, if you do have a table where you're gaming with small children and you're worried about them chipping your minis and dropping them, what some people will do is they'll use furniture, uh, which is kind of like an acrylic floor polish. And they'll actually coat the mini in that, which makes it kind of like a protective shell, if you will. And then they'll use a dull coat or some clear coat, like a flat clear coat over top of that. And what that'll do is that'll reduce the shine from the future floor polish. And then that'll also protect the mini some more. So there we go. We're about done there. Get just a little closer to the feet there. So like I said, it doesn't really matter if you get a little bit on the boot because the boots are not going to be the, the main draw on the mini there. Plus we can always touch it up a little bit after we even after we clear coat it, so not a huge deal. Alright guys, so that is what we have so far. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this guy with some clear coat. I'm going to hit him with one good blast. Um, normally you only need one coat. If you have a model that's extremely shiny, sometimes you might want to hit him with two. That should be more than enough in this guy's case. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and pause this. All right, gentlemen, we are back. So here is the finished product. You can see the ink wash did its work. It made the muscles pop out nice and pretty. The clear coat did not cover up the yellow on the headpiece. It actually lightened up the horns just a little bit, which was nice. And we can see the axe now looks definitely sharp towards the edge. The boots have some nice highlight. So yeah, overall, like I'm pretty happy. Overall, we spent about 35, maybe 45 minutes on this one mini. A um, couple of things we can do, like so we can still dry brush the base a little bit. Just kind of make this pop down here. Um, I would, what I'll do is I'll probably dry brush mine gray. And then we could either leave it on that base or we could add like a clear base and then cut the feet off so he just sits on top of that or we can put like a little black base which I'm not sure if the clear base would fit him well, that might just barely fit his feet so yeah that is it folks I hope this you uh, found this helpful um, if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up this will be the first in about 10 videos I'm gonna do one about glazing I'm gonna do one more about shading I'll do one about matching colors like how to use the color wheel and then I'll do one over some of the technical paints like Blood for the Blood God and some of the other uh, kind of fancy technical paints. So definitely stay tuned, guys. I've got a lot more videos out there for you guys. That way you guys can start learning how to paint, get more comfortable with it, and you guys can produce some super awesome minis. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.